Hi, welcome to Bear Mountain. Today we're going to be talking a bit about how we track information and keep track of what we're doing on the farm. One of the things that we uh, do for our farm information is we keep a lot of Google spreadsheets, particularly Google Sheets on things like our planting information, our sowings, planting in the field, bump ups. Um, we keep track of our seed inventories on Google Sheets, we keep track of our production plan on Google Sheets, and we also track our harvest on Google Sheets. But one of the biggest problems with using a Google Sheet, particularly when you're doing things out in the field, is trying to record information directly into a Google Sheet is very cumbersome. Particularly if there's more than three or four columns in a spreadsheet, it can get pretty difficult. So we, for the longest time, have been trying to figure out how to get a mobile application that would link to a Google Sheet and enable us to store our data and enter it uh, with much more ease and something that seems to be more of a better fit and almost like a native type fit, so to speak, to our phones. We use Samsung Galaxy 8 phones and they have a nice wide screen, but if we really needed something that was a little more bulletproof and that wouldn't allow us to miss things or actually input wrong things in the wrong places in our spreadsheets. So this is where we found this program called AppSheet. Now AppSheet, what it does is it specifically does exactly what we, we needed. It links a Google spreadsheet or spreadsheets to a mobile application so that you can use that on your phone to actually record information directly into a sheet. It's really a pretty powerful program. You can make it very simple where it's just a simple link one column to a field on your app and it fills in or you can make it so it will actually calculate various different things or filter things out or even link to multiple sheets. It also is pretty powerful on the free side but even more so if you go to a premium account, if you have multiple employees like, you know, five, 10 employees that are doing various different things, you can get the premium version, which enables you to get a really robust mobile application. So not trying to delve in too far into the actual programming of it. Let's just go in and take a look at an example of what we have. If you notice below, these are our prototype apps that we've created. We created one for our plant logs, which you know talks about what we sow and how we deal with it, our seed inventory, and our harvest log. The other two things here were personal and they were used just to basically test the system out before we started to try to do something related to the business itself. Let's go in and look at today and talk about our plant log and look at the various aspects of it and how it works. All right. AppSheet itself, the best way to program the app is on your main PC. Um, the screen itself, when you look at it, what you see is you see three parts to it. On the far left is AppSheet's menu tree, which points you to different functions that they do in actually creating the app, such as defining what data is or what spreadsheets you're connecting to. Uh, the UX is the user interfaces, what kind of menus you're going to be creating. Uh, behaviors, which could be related back to certain icons on the screen, what they do. Um, security, if, especially if you're rolling out to more than you know, two or three people. Um, approved users. Uh, and basically how to manage an actual rollout or deployment of an application to um, many more than one or two people. The main in the center is where your actual work area is. And in this case, it defaults into the data, which are the tables that you're connecting to or the spreadsheets you're connecting to. Off to the far right is an actual preview of, in this case, uh, what it would look like on a phone screen. And so you can get a, a level idea of, you know, basically what it is you're doing and how it's going to appear to the user itself. But the main work area is in the center. This is where you actually set up, you know, the basic data connecting to the spreadsheet. In this case, if you look at this one, plant logs is the name of this table. And it's connecting to the spreadsheet plant logs. And under that plant logs, there's an actual worksheet page called plant logs. 
The second table here is our plant master, which is our listing of all of our seeds and plants that we grow on the farm. It's part of our production planning spreadsheet and its page name is plant master. So just to give you a basic idea, once you connect up to the plant log the table, you would then connect up to the columns that you want to actually show in the application itself. In this case, it's a pretty simple spreadsheet, so we made certain that we connected every single you know, column in the spreadsheet to the actual app itself. So there's quite a few things in here, and you can make these quite sophisticated. You can have fields and have them read only. You can have them hidden. Some of them are obviously always required. And you can also attach different kind of logic to different fields. They can have lookups that can go back to one spreadsheet and look at a, things up. You can create filtered views, which they call slices. Or you can change the user settings in terms of change menu headings and things of that nature. So you can make your app look quite, quite sophisticated relative to the actual spreadsheet that's going underneath it. You can make quite a few changes to it. In this case, what we're going to be doing is just kind of showing you that in general how we set this up. So, the plant log itself is the link, this table is the link back to the spreadsheet. The plant master is actually just a lookup table. So let's go over here to the right side and see, well, how does the application really look and how does it work? What you see on the front here are basically some data that's already been put in of things that we've already seeded. So if you start, when you look at it, it's sorting by the common name and then the variety underneath it and the plant week is, is also shown. If you wanted to look at the actual data of the individual record or row in the spreadsheet itself, you click on this little arrow to the right and it expands it out. Each one of these is a field in the spreadsheet itself. And you can see that, you know, what the product ID number is, the scheduled week, its common name, the varietal name. This little triangle uh, basically is an indicator that it's a look lookup, and it doesn't mean anything at this point on this screen. And it, it's just something that we're still working through and trying to figure out the exact meaning of it, but it doesn't seem to have any impact on what we're doing. Date sown is when we sowed it, block size, what we're how many did we sow? And this information on amount sown by the product ID number also links back to our seed inventory. So once we sync this up to our plant log, it also syncs up to our seed inventory and removes that from our seed inventory, which is really beneficial because then we can go back through and see in seed inventory if we've got a shortage and we need to order more. And we'll talk about that in our next video, how we run our seed inventory itself. The other fields in here are data that you would fill in afterwards, such as, well, date germinated and the amount germinated. Uh, did we transplant these things directly to the field or did we bump them up? And then there's calculated fields in here for yields and other things. So let's just take an example. Um, if we go in and edit this and say we wanted to put information in, you would notice the blue dot here under this entered record shows a pencil and a square. When you hit that, it puts this record in edit mode. So now you can change anything in the field or add additional information, such as date germinated or the number germinated. When you're finished, you simply save, or if you made a mistake, you hit cancel. In this case, we're saving, and it automatically goes back and syncs with the spreadsheet itself. Let's go back to the main menu now and take a look at actually adding a record. You notice now the blue dot has changed to a plus. That means we're adding a record at this point. So let's click on that and see what happens. <clears throat> this is a blank record or row in the spreadsheet. So the first thing we do is say, well, we scheduled week three. That's where we are right now. And let's see what we want to sew. Now, this is where the link back to the plant master comes into place. This shows the common name of everything that we have in our production plan. So we're not sorting through things that we're not dealing with in our plant master. 
And this drop down list is pretty complete. It's got a lot of stuff in it. In this case, what we'd want to do, going back to this, is let's just pick Azure Readem as an example. When you put that in as a common name, the variety field now shows up. And so you hit the down arrow on that. And what you see is, since this is a link, it's a drop down filtered menu. It's only going to show the varieties related to Azure Readem. So it's not going to put in varieties that are related to Feverfew or something else. You can just click on the one you want and it puts it into the system. Now, date zone would be today, which is the 19th of January. And we put the year in as a four digit. That's simply a matter of convenience of how we decided to put it in. Lock size is another drop down menu. This gives our available sizes that we're, we seed it into. In this case, we're using a mini block. And we're gonna do a complete 1020 tray. So let's say we're gonna put in 300. And that would be it for entering what we sown. Now remember, these fields are linked back to the, to the seed inventory. So once we enter this record, it's gonna not only update our plant log, but it's also gonna update our seed inventory as well. See, now you can see that the Azure item is entered as a record. Now let's just say, now we have one other thing we wanna do. Let's say it's two weeks later. We look at the detail in here you can see that we've changed to the edit function we hit edit now we can key in our germination date well germination let's say is the end of the month let's say the 31st of january 2018 and let's say our amount germinated was 280 out of the 300 and that's the information we key in at this point so we say, okay, well, let's use 280 instead of 279. We save it. <clears throat> Again, it goes back and syncs to the record in the spreadsheet. Now, when you look at the actual record, you can see your information entered is there. It's 280. But look at this. It calculated the days it took to germinate. It calculated the germination percentage. All this information is stored in the spreadsheet itself for you to use at a later date to help planning for the future. Now, let's just say you made a total mistake. You say, oh my God, I didn't really want to key this in at all. There is the option to get rid of the entire row. So you hit delete. It's going to ask you, are you sure? And you go, yeah. Now that record is actually gone from the spreadsheet as well as from your app. See, it's gone. Let's go to the next step. Let's take a look at the actual spreadsheet itself. This is really a pretty simple spreadsheet. It's column based and most of these fields don't do any calculation. They're simply filled in by the app itself. We scheduled week, our ID number, our common name, varietal name, date zone, all this basic information is keyed in and is controlled by the mobile app itself. So you can go into this and say, well, wait a minute, I'm just going to change it myself. You can go in and manually input stuff on this spreadsheet. But as you can see, a spreadsheet of this nature trying to be used on a mobile device would be very difficult to use. And that's why the app sheet is so powerful. The thing about this is the app sheet is really a clean way of getting that information in and so it also works under Wi-Fi as well as 4G so if you have access to any kind of communication back to the cloud the information you're using on your app sheet will be updated if not what happens is the information is still recorded on your phone but it's not going to sync back until you get back into range where your phone reconnects well, we hope this kind of helps you out, give you an idea of, of maybe something that could be useful on your farm. If you found this useful, um, we hope it did, please uh, subscribe to our station. And we uh, are going to be doing a couple more videos on showing how we're using AppSheet with our seed inventory, as well as our harvest log. 
And then we have a couple other, other utilities that are not related to AppSheet, but you may also find useful, and we'll talk about those as we go forward. So I want to thank you today for watching, and um, have a good day.